So this is one, all of these sessions are amazing, but this is one particularly because uh, these are two dear friends. I've worked with Jennifer for 10 years now. I've known Ellen for over 10 years. They're doing a session that is called uh, Science Will Win, a behind the scenes look at Pfizer's digital communications landscape during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so um, moderating us today is Jennifer Gottlieb. She is our global president of Real Chemistry. And so without further ado, Jen, I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I'm in here, I'm, I'm at home wearing my Science Will Win mask, as is my guest, Ellen Gerstein, who's with Pfizer, who I'll formally introduce in a minute. But for listening purposes, uh, we will take off our masks, but in solidarity and in honor of what's gone on in the last year, it's always nice to be able to, you know, wear that and feel feel great about all that we've done. Um, but as Aaron said, I'm Jennifer Gottlieb. I'm the global president of Real Chemistry, uh, formerly known as W2O. I'm here today with um, somebody I consider a client, a colleague, and a friend, Ellen Gerstein uh, from Pfizer. She's the senior director of content strategy and engagement and corporate affairs at Pfizer. Um, and there's nobody I would rather speak to today than Ellen somebody who was on the front lines as well as behind the scenes um, during Pfizer's incredibly incredible journey this year to create the first COVID-19 vaccine that the world had been waiting for and will change us forever. Um, one important lens on this global pandemic that I've been thinking about a lot is what are the things that we've done or that Ellen's done that never had been done before? And Ellen's focus is on digital and social strategy and implementation. Um, I can't think of a time when that was more necessary um, than during this pandemic. Ellen, we're thrilled to have you here today. We're so grateful for everything you and the team at Pfizer have done over the last 12 months. Um, and with that, I'd love to uh, welcome you formally. And if you had anything you wanted to add to what I, what I started with, and then we can get going in having a pretty robust discussion so we can get a bird's eye view into what it was like. Well, thank you, Jen, for that lovely introduction. And thank you to everyone in the Real Chemistry team for having me here today. I'm really excited to be able to share a little bit about what life was like behind the scenes for the communications team at Pfizer. Thank you. So it's interesting, you know, I've worked with you before just during South by Southwest, Ellen, you know, and you've always come with such great innovation in mind, as well as kind of what's next in, in social and digital, but never before was it under the auspices of something so important, life-changing. And I've personally never been prouder to be in the pharmaceutical business and industry. I've been saying that a lot. I know you feel the same. Um, so the development of the COVID-19 vaccine was a historic moment for the world and for the healthcare industry. Can you just tell us a little bit about what it was like to be part of that team um, overall and specifically related to your role? Well, team is the opportune word there. Um, from the first moment we started working towards the goal of eventually bringing products to a response to the pandemic, um, we formed a team and that started with daily meetings and it evolved into a group text and other ways to stay in touch. And I think that was one of the secrets to our success is that we, we formed a table and we made room for various individuals to be at that table. And it was somewhat unique that social and digital had a seat at the table from the beginning. And it really helped to shape our response and make sure that what we were putting out there was something that our followers and our audience would find useful in the moment. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting, you know, having worked with you and, and watched from afar, you know, I saw certain areas of Pfizer's team, both from, you know, I call it like from bench to bedside or from, you know, from the lab, right? All the way through to manufacturing, like everybody working together. Most recently, I watched the documentary that Pfizer had worked collectively with National Geographic to put out. Um, and even having lived this with you, it was so fascinating to watch how condensed the time frame had to be and how you had to kind of, you know, um, 
fly the plane and 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 put the wheels down all at the same time, right? It was something yeah. that was like you had to be thinking two steps ahead um, every moment of of every part of it. And you know, you said right from the beginning, social had a seat at the core table. But you and I both know that as important as social and digital have become, and the importance of it in healthcare has accelerated 10 times, according to recent reports during the pandemic. Can you tell us a little bit, can you give us a few examples of like how that came to be? Because I feel like it was necessity that drove kind of, you know, the, the, that core team, including yourself, um, yeah. to be on the front lines in real time. Absolutely. Um, if you take us back to January and February, when everybody was hearing about the novel coronavirus, um, we very much wanted to talk about it. But at that point, we weren't sure what our place in the conversation was. One, we hadn't announced any response. And that's probably the most important thing, because you didn't want to signal that we, we had a dog in the fight, as it were. Um, so for us to make statements about you know, how to protect yourself or you know, different things that you could do to stay safe from coronavirus, that sent a signal and we were very conscious of that. So while we prepared some content, we also looked at ways to kind of go around the conversation. And a member of my team, Brooke Spenke, I'm gonna give her a shout out, um, found a very creative way to do that. She put up a tweet um, about your uh, hand washing. Um, it was something she had done for um, World, World Antibiotic Awareness Week or another awareness day. And it was, what's your go-to song for hand washing? Um, answer here and tell us. Uh, it, it performed very well, but a member of senior leadership saw it and said, that's really great. We need to be doing more things like this. We need to, to position ourselves as a trusted voice in the conversation and a company that cares about finding a solution. And for us, that was it. We were off to the races because that became our North Star. Um, it may have been an offhanded comment from somebody, but it really did set the stage for us and, and help us determine what our role was. Um, the whole trusted voice idea, if you watch the documentary, Dr. Dara Richardson Haran was a big part of that. She's our chief patient officer. What she didn't mention in the documentary was she started in the first days right before we shut down. And she very kindly um, gave me time right before we, we all had to leave the office and said, here's some suggestions of how you can message around this, but know that you can use me. Um, if you need to make videos or um, I can talk about how to wear a mask or hand washing or, or social distancing, whatever it is, use me, I'm here. Um, our previous chief medical officer, Mace Rothenberg, did the same thing. So we had those trusted voices in the conversation. And then we looked to SEO, frankly, what were people asking? Um, if they wanted to know about, you know, safety and understanding, you know, how the vaccine was manufactured, you know, other things that we could provide answers to, we were there to provide them. And by keeping it very simple at times, we were able to kind of get that trust with the audience um, and, and provide that authentic voice that they were looking for. And that was something that's you know, really carried us through to now. Absolutely. I, you know, it's so interesting because, um, you know, we always say mother is the necessity of, inve you know, invention. I think, or, you know, I think that with yes, with the vaccine, but also with the digital piece and the social, the world was watching and the world was asking and the world was inquiring. And it's like, I think that you guys had to authentically respond, right? It wasn't a, should we, or should we not? It's like, how do we engage in this dialogue that is happening online in real time to ensure that we have a voice, right? in mm -hmm. the situation. And, and one thing that you and I have talked about is, um, we talk a lot about social media and digital media. Those are large words because there's lots of different facets to that, right? But we talked about owned media, right? You and I talked a little bit about the fact that, you know, there is, you know, you can put information out and people write their stories or people will tweet about something. But I found that you had to really embrace um, your own channel. Um, your own voice, your own, own thing. And I know part of that was with the pledge that you put out. So I'd love to talk a little bit about the pledge and then maybe talk a little bit about um, what what other own content, um, you know, you found as, as you looked at what people were absorbing and needing and, and found yourself responsive to that. Yeah. 
And the pledge was something that was terrifically unique and something that we all kind of questioned up until the morning that it happened, whether it would actually work. Um, and I mean all the aspects of it. The idea that these competitors would come together and say, we are in this for the right reasons. Our goal is to put the science first. We are looking to make sure that we are here for the common good. And we are pledging to let the science guide us. Um, we did something fairly unique, which was, and very um, untested in the social space. We did a handshake where we started off by saying on our Twitter channel, we pledge to follow these guidelines. Do you, and I think we handed it off to J&J, &J, and apologies if I don't remember the exact order. Do you, J&J, &J, you know, agree to follow this pledge? And it went company to company with each company tagging the next one in line until we got to the end. And it was, you know, we had our hearts in our throats and, and, you know, it's not the most dramatic thing that's ever happened. But if you're a social media manager, you know that a lot of times somebody's going to drop the baton and, you know, tag the wrong account or, you know, sure. somebody went to get a coffee and they forgot to, you know, do it. But everyone went through with it and the pledge was carried through in a Twitter handshake. And that was really exciting. Um, another great moment was when, and, and this is, again, really simple, but it showed our seat at the table. Um, when we announced our partnership with Beyond Tech, um, we knew that mRNA was not something that the average American was going to understand, much less a lot of journalists. We knew there was some explaining that needed to be done. So we set up a Twitter thread that stepped piece by piece how an mRNA vaccine works. And we issued it the morning that we announced the partnership. That night, we saw a number of news programs refer back to it by saying, this morning, Pfizer tweeted you know, that our own channels were generating earned media was incredibly, you know, unique. But it also speaks to the fact that our team worked with the media team to come up with that. It wasn't, hey, here's the press release, write the tweet. It was, let's think creatively, work together, and come up with something. Because when our journalists, you know, ask further questions, I'd love to be able to point them to a tweet. And that's exactly what happened. Um, we also, and, and Albert pointed this out in the documentary, Albert, like I know him, you know, Albert Borla, our CEO. I think the whole world knows him as Albert now. Yeah. I think we do. We can call him Albert. We'll go with this. Um, pointed out in the documentary that he wrote a number of open letters to colleagues, uh, to the media, just talking about how we were going to follow the science, how, you know, he was responding to comments that were made during the presidential debate. And those generated a lot of earned media. Those were picked up and, you know, they came from our channels. That was that was an interesting moment for us because we saw the power of, you know, people coming to the Pfizer channel. And you speak about reputation. You know, when I joined Pfizer four years ago, I had never worked in pharma. And I saw headlines that said pharma as bad as big tobacco. And now all of a sudden we're expected to save the world. So that was a change. Absolutely, absolutely. And you guys really met that where it was. And, and the good news is the latest data shows that uh, I think there's twice as many people in the country that, that think positively about the pharmaceutical industry, which they should because of all the great innovation. And, and you know, sadly, it's a pandemic that, that, that allows that to show. But, but, you know, at the end of the day, there's so many important developments that have happened over time, you know, with this vaccine being now one of the most important, you know, I, I want to go back a bit to the pledge and to the Twitter handshake because, um, you know, it's so interesting how we saw the whole world go digital during the pandemic, right? Um, not just with you guys. And, you know, that Twitter handshake is really the virtual way that many like company leaders or CEOs would have gotten together at a round table or in a room and come to an alignment that, you know, science will win and we will follow the science and it would have been a whole event, right? And instead you were able to still have that same, um, the same authenticity of all these typically competing companies coming together for the greater good of humanity and science through a Twitter handshake which I think is so, so meaningful um, and, and really pretty amazing. You know, the other thing I wanted to mention about the authenticity of the owned media, or let's just say that, you know, the letters from Albert 
the, the, the letter he penned with the science will win, which on our masks, and it will go down in history as a important, important phrase that had a lot of meaning. Um, you know, it's interesting, the true authenticity of, of Albert as a leader came out as that content continued to come out. Um, and it put a face on Pfizer, which was very necessary at this time. And having known him for a long time through his, his rise at Pfizer and his trajectory, I mean, I can't think of a more authentic, you know, person um, to be out in front. And, and I think you guys did a wonderful job, you know, allowing that to, to come through through the, the digital and social media. Um, so I think that's that's very important. And I'm sure that you felt that as well. Absolutely. Um, what you see is very authentic to who he is. And he plays a large role in his social presence too. I mean, he, he takes yeah. um, a lot of ownership in that. And, you know, you spoke about the handshake and, you know, when different milestones have happened or when an approval came through um, for J&J &J or Moderna, he wanted to congratulate them. He wanted to, you know, take that place in the industry and make sure that, you know, it was seen as, you know, we're in this together. This is not about, you know, one company up against another. So Absolutely. that's a standard yeah. that we all can follow. Now, Ellen, um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, I think it's November 8th. What was the what was the big day? There was a day that that you got word that the vaccine worked. Can you give us the three minutes of what it was like sitting at your desk that day? Right here. Um, so November 8th, uh, we were called to a uh, Zoom meeting at, you know, seven or eight o'clock at night. I can't remember. And no, you know, context to it, but we knew it was, are we going to have a vaccine or not? And our communications team got on and the, the head of the group said, we have a vaccine and people were screaming, people were crying. Um, we knew that the executive leadership team had just gotten word and it was just an amazing moment. But, you know, that's when our job started because we had prepared a lot of materials for that announcement, but then it was go time. And many of us stayed up all night just because we wanted to, we couldn't really sleep. We sure. um, just... You know, I was sitting right here getting everything ready and prepping everything. And as we got to the morning, I remember it was about six o'clock and I'm looking out my window. I'm watching my TV over here. I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking in this tiny little room, my bedroom, um, you know, the world's about to change. Really, in 45 minutes, we are going to be in a different place. We're going to go from hopeless to hope because of the work of my brave colleagues who have given up so much of their lives to build this vaccine. And I watched the TV, I had it on CNBC, I waited till 6.45 and then the breaking news scroll came, Meg Terrell's interviewing Albert. And then at seven o'clock, I'm flipping through to, to every channel. They are all leading with this. I mean, Gail King is for Clem. She's like, I can't believe it. This is amazing. Everybody's going nuts. And then my phone starts blowing up and I'm, I'm just, I'm so out of my mind at this point as I am working to put through all the social posts and get everything out there in the cadence that we've agreed upon, why are my friends all calling me? Oh, okay, they're congratulating me. I didn't do anything, but yes, I mean, our team did take a little victory lap because um, it, it was a moment, it was a special moment. And I thought back to talking to a friend of mine who worked on the front lines at New York Presbyterian Hospital during the pandemic. And I, I remember thanking him and he said, you know what, you have work to do here too. And I was like, I, I'm not saving lives. He goes, no, but when the vaccine comes out, you guys have to be the ones to get the shots in people's arms and convince them of yes. that. Absolutely. I think, every, I think to your point, like the innovation, I mean, you know, thankfully starts with the development of the vaccine, of course, like you can't even yes. compare it, but there's so much more that had to innovate along that journey to ensure that the right people are getting it. And it was such a tremendous process and still is. I mean, yeah. we're seeing the rates go up, but, but such a, such a process. And, you know, I can only, I get chills when I hear you talk about that morning and, and that, you know, when you had to like hit the hit, you know, send on the first tweet, right. And, and what a, what a moment that that was. And, uh, and how amazing. Um, and I had, to, had two other questions. I know we want to take maybe a question or two before before the end is that um, it's kind of a combination of like the three things that you learned 
Um, but I think you can also maybe combine that with how does that relate to where we go from here and maybe what's changed um, or what, you know, what you think may change in terms of the seat at the table that you and, and our digital and social colleagues have. Definitely. I would say you don't do it alone. Um, as much as you think you can do it alone, you don't do it alone. I was very lucky to have a great group of um, colleagues. Um, we still have the group texts going just you know, to check in on different things and cheer each other on and keep each other you know, focused on things. Um, don't be afraid to raise your hand and ask for help. Um, I also had another group text with my team, which was kind of the hand raiser thing of, all right, this is going on. Who's got time to devote to this? Make sure that you can cycle people in. Um, everybody should have an opportunity to touch a moment like this. That was the other thing that I said, that this is going to be something, and we should all have the opportunity to contribute to this. Um, and also, something I learned later in the game was don't be afraid to bring people off the bench. Um, we got tired. A lot of us got tired. And um, I remember we were trying to come up with an idea and it wasn't gelling. And then somebody new came in and just put it together. And I thought, sometimes you got to cycle in the new talent. Right. And that was, that was an eye opener. It was a little bit of an ego moment, but at the same time, I thought, you know what, you did your time and, <laughs> you know, you have to listen to, to new voices. And I think, you know, looking forward, to, to how this changes things. I do think we will continue as an industry to be more digital first. Um, we, we saw how um, the conversation changed. We, we had people who were focused on what was happening online as much as they were focused in the media. Yes. So I think that's going to be really a game changer going forward. Yeah, I think all of those things resonate so much. Um, and I think that I do not think we'll ever go back to, to the way it was. I think that we have to hold on to what was great and what, and I do believe that the, you know, the speed at which everything was able to happen over this, from a scientific standpoint, from a clinical trial standpoint, a development standpoint, having worked in vaccines my whole career um, and having watched you guys be able to mobilize and communicate in record time, in real time, the way you did for yeah. a pharmaceutical company. Um, we have to bottle that and take it forward, you know, um, with, with really with patients and public health, you know, as our North star and the equity um, and yeah. the diversity in our clinical trials. Like we can't yes. forget that, like more people having a seat at the table in that too. Absolutely. A hundred percent being able to do that along with, you know, maximizing the time frame mm -hmm. um, has been great. And I'm doing some work, I think, you know, in vaccine confidence, um, focused on many different communities, um, helping to help educate and help people understand you know, about the vaccine and, and the importance of it and vaccination in general. So it's been really, really good to do that too. Um, I know that we may have some questions. Um, going to take a quick look at the chat. Um, one question, uh, Ellen, is how, um, in terms of employee engagement, you know, I know, I, I feel like you also had a wonderful employee engagement and advocacy, a lot of pride um, from people during during this. Can you talk a little bit about how you were able to mobilize that? And I will be talking about that tomorrow. <laughs> I know, I saw you're on another panel, oh, yeah. Um, that was something that, that we launched an employee engagement program in March of last year. And we saw it, it exploded. Um, people wanted to cheer the efforts on. And it was across the board. It wasn't just announcements about the vaccine. It was when we had... Um, a video about James, the ice man, the, the um, employee who put the ice in the containers that held the vaccine before it was shipped off. We did a video on him and James became a Pfizer celebrity. Um, it, it was everything involving this effort. People wanted to cheer it on. They wanted to be a part of it. Um, just people had such pride in the organization. I mean, yes, anything that, that Albert said, people got behind that. They, they wanted to share it and, and show that we were, behind, we were behind those efforts. But on their LinkedIn channels, on their Twitter, you could see that people are starting to even write their own um, comments on things. And the pride that they were taking in things was just inspiring. Um, and I'm glad that we were able to give them that content because, as you know, in pharma, that's not the easiest thing. 
So um, absolutely. Yeah. Tune in tomorrow because I'll have even more comments. On I know. I know. I was excited to see that you're like a South by Southwest celebrity that again this year, Ellen, I think you might have record, record amount celebrity. of panels um, with good reason. I can't think of a, of a more important topic even at South by this year than, than how we've navigated through the pandemic. Well, I think we might be coming up on time. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Ellen, in terms of, um, of this experience? I, I can just say um, I'm grateful for the support of my team, but I'm as grateful for the support of our followers and our audience who also cheered us on. I read the comments. I always read the comments. And sometimes it's with a little bit of trepidation, but I was incredibly grateful to see so many people cheering on Pfizer through the process. It gave us, um, you know, such a lift. I will also say, especially seeing people like you, Jen, people in the industry who knew what we were going through, who knew what those late nights and those early mornings yes. were. And when you guys said, you guys are killing it, we knew that you knew what it was like. So that was incredibly humbling and made us feel very grateful for your support. So I, I thank you for that. Absolutely. I think I'll conclude that. I see Aaron's coming back to visit with us. I, I think I'll conclude that by saying a huge thank you to you and all of your colleagues at Pfizer. The same thank you I would say to the healthcare workers, the frontline workers, everybody who was working through the pandemic, um, whether it was to Thank keep us all going. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I would say that we, um, you know, I, I know I speak for many people that there's everybody's so grateful for everything. And I know that you have not gotten a lot of sleep in the last 12 months. Um, I know that nobody, in fact, it's in the documentary, multiple people said they remember the day they told their families, I will see you when I get this done, when I make it happen. And I know that, and, you know, um, you know, we're just so grateful. I'm so grateful that you were able to make the time to come speak with us today and give us an inside view into um, how you guys, uh, how you guys made this happen, how you brought the vaccine to market and, uh, and we'll continue to root for science will win because science is winning. And, uh, and we're going to get through this.